Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillah hamdan hamdan Wa nashkuru syukran syukran Wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alaih Wa na'udhu billahi min syururi anfusina Wa min sayyiati amalina Man yahdihillahu falamudillal Wa man yudlil falahadiyal Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah Wahdahu la sharika lah Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu صلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ربي زدنا علما ورزقنا فحما سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم اللهم ارنا حقا حقا وارزقنا اتباع وارنا باطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابا وكل الحق من ربكم <coughs> الحمد لله praises and thanks to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us this opportunity to meet online <coughs> may this lesson be a means of salvation for the sins we have committed may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us better ability to understand his deen and may this lesson may this time where we are investing for him may it be the means of profit for us to get our admission into his paradise ameen ya Allah ya Rabbil Alameen and I like to say that the truth is only from God and whatever evil is from myself and then from shaitan. Today's topic is going to be related to Prophet Muhammad, as you know, the series. But how many amongst us are familiar that the first person to welcome and receive our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was a black women slave not only that she was a black woman but she was also a slave when prophet sallallahu was making his entrance into the world the first person to hold him was a black woman slave today in our series emulating the approach of the prophet in captivating society we will be exploring on the birth of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu which is introduction of Prophet Muhammad through birth into this world. The topic of discussion or sharing is not going to revolve around the date of his birth, because there are many different opinions by different scholars regarding his date without having a proper basis on it and the topic of the date has been a very controversial topic it is a very heated matter a heated topic throughout history to the extent that people focus has been on quantity i.e which is number and dates then quality learning essential lessons from the life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to enhance and uplift our spirituality that should be the purpose of learning the sirah but then it has went into it has taken a different uh, uh, a different phase that people are moving towards things which will not uplift their spirituality people are putting their efforts no doubt that those effort has been been acted by or performed by the scholars in a scholarly level where they have have attained a certain degree for them to come into a conclusion but for us for you and me when we want to learn from the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it should elevate our faith within ourselves from his from his life story. Every single part of his life, every section of his life, every episodes of his life, we should learn lessons rather than we delving into topic of dates. And Allah subhanahu wa taala, the the Creator of all His creation have never emphasized a point quantity over quality. 
He has always emphasized the vice versa, which is quality over quantity. For instance, for instance, from the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the Quran. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa regarding the story of Ashab al-Kahfi, chapter number 18 of the Quran. The purpose of the revelation was to explain to the society that the reason why the youth isolated themselves away from the society was only for them to dedicate and devote themselves solely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was the sole purpose of them refraining away or refraining away from the society. That was the very reason. But then what became the heart of the topic? People were so curious about how many people resided or dwelled in the kif. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in, in Surah Al-Kaf, بَعْدَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ سَمِيرَ عَلِي مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ سَيَكُولُونَ الثَّلَاثَةُ الرَّابِئُهُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ وَيَكُولُونَ خَمْسَةُ السَّالِسُهُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ رَجْمًا بِالْغَيْبِ وَيَكُولُونَ سَبَعَةُ وَثَامِنُهُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ كُنْ رَبِّ أَعْلَامُ بِعِدَّدِهِمْ مَا يَعْلَمْهُمْ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا فَلَا تُمَارِ فِيهِمْ إِلَّا مِرَاءً ظَاهِرًا وَلَا تَسْتَفْتِ فِيهِمْ مِنْهُمْ أَحَدًا وَلَا تَسْتَفْتِ فِيهِمْ مِنْهُمْ أَحَدًا That they all started to gather and they started to have a argument between themselves that how many of the youth resided in the cave? Was it three or four? Or was it five or six? رَجُمًا بِالْغَيْبِ just throwing, just throwing uh, the, 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 the numbers without them having a proper target. And coming into an argument, right? Blindly throwing numbers without basis, it is the same with, it is, it is the same, it is the very same thing with the birth date of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But we have come to a conclusion by by, by holding on to Ibn, Ibn Ishaq that Prophet Sallallahu was born in Chal, but the date is not the matter. But what is much more uh, important is for us to know that the detail of how he was born and who received him and what was the statement of the person who received him when she first saw Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the lessons where we can learn from it is much more important for us. And these are the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah guides us to a profound conclusion by revealing in His revelation that don't argue and sink yourself into matters which doesn't increase on your spirituality. There are things which does not increase in our spirituality. Certain things, right? A lot of us revolve our life just through numbers. You know, from, from the day one of our life, particularly we living as a Singaporean, a lot of things revolve around numbers. When we go to school, we look, uh, no doubt that, you know, a number is only an indication of how well you have performed in school, but that doesn't determine that you have acquired the knowledge. <clears throat> Anyone can just sit down and score good and great marks for the examination, but that does not mean that they have understood what they have learned. So here again, this is an important point where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of his creation, is sending a message, a straightforward message, that what is important is for us to reflect upon the lessons, but not by not us delving too much into the dates or numbers, which is the quantity. So let us reflect upon the quality, the purpose, then the quality in these sessions. When we speak about the birth of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it has been narrated by Qatad al Ansari, radiyallahu taala anhu, that he asked Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that. Uh, why was fasting on Monday was very important. He said, fasting on Monday is, is important because that is the day I was born and that is the day when the mission started, i.e. the revelation came down upon Prophet Muhammad 
So Prophet have stated that I, he was born on a Monday. So that is very clear cut. So this is amongst the sunnah. It is amongst the tradition of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that whoever wish or wants to commemorate the birthday of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, let him and her fast on Monday. That is point number one. Point number two, that when Amina was conceived with her first child without her knowing that he is going to become the leader of all the nations, she went into a state of depression. Why? Because when she was conceived with her first child, her beloved husband, Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib, had to leave or depart out of Mecca shortly after their marriage for a business trip. So when he left for his business trip, she was left alone. This is how much we have heard about the seerah. That she was struggling on uh, by herself throughout the, the 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 time when she was conceived with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but that is not true, and that is not the reality. That is not true. That is not true. For indeed, there is a story which is not that popular, or which has not been highlighted in the English translation of the Sirah. Not many authors of the Sirah who have written the Sirah in English language have pointed out to a very important point, the missing link. Who accompanied Amina bint Abdul Wahab during the absence of Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib? Amina was accompanied by a young black women slave by the name of Baraka. Baraka was the slave which was given as a gift by Abdul Muttalib during the marriage between Abdullah and Amina. So ever since Barakah was given as a gift. Barakah did not leave the household of Abdullah and Amina. She loved to serve both their... Uh, they, they, she used to call him, you know, uh, Abi wa Ummi, mom and dad. And the fact that Abdullah and Amina literally took care of her very well. And furthermore, Barakah does not even know of her own lineage. Where else for Bilal ibn Rabah, we know that you know Bilal had a father named Rabah. But for, however, for Baraka, she does not even know who is her own parents. That was the state of that woman. And moreover, you know, there are some narration which has been stated that she was not a very attractive lady. Because they are in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they can have a dark complexion, but yet, you know, their features can be appealing to others but yet for 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 for, for baraka not only that she was she was having a dark complexion but the other thing the other thing was she she, she did not have a a a a, a, a very uh, attractive uh, looking so that being a point here when amina was pregnant and conceived with her first child the pillar and the caretaker during the absence of Abdullah was Barakah. Barakah used to sleep at the feet of Amina. Once when she had a dream, Amina binti Abdul Wahab, she had a dream that lights were illuminating from her abdomen and literally illuminating the entire Makkah. And she, when, when she woke up, the first person where she narrated 
this dream to was Amina uh, Afwan. The first person where she narrated the dream was uh, Barakah. And when Barakah heard of that dream, she said, uh, Oh my lady, are you feeling pregnant? Then Amina replied optimistically by stating that yes, I am. Then Barakah spoke a very profound statement that this is a sign from the heaven. Now this is amongst the characteristic of Barakah. She will never speak a ill word. She has never spoken an ill word. And Amina used to share her worries, share her sadness, her, and when she was in the state of depression, where any pregnant women would go through during their three trimesters, used to share all her emotions with Baraka. And Baraka became her free counsellor and consultant and, and also like a psychologist, an unpaid psychologist, to calm Amina down throughout her pregnancy. And there are also narration which has been stated that, you know, Amina went through a pregnancy which was uh, uh, free from hardship. Basically, any women who gets, who, 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 who conceives, they will go through a certain degree of hardship and difficulty. When Amina was pregnant with Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she was having a very uh, relaxed and calm trimesters. So moving forward, when, when Amina was having her final contraction for, for her to deliver her first child, Ami Barakah was beside her. Barakah was taking care of Amina throughout. So when she was feeling the pain for her to deliver her first son, Barakah was there taking care and she assisted and became the midwife for she became the midwife for Amina bint Abdul Wahab and when Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was making his entrance into this world Barakah was the first person to touch him on her hand and receive him and when he was receiving Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam number one Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was makhtun you know he was already circumcised and masroor uh, his uh, his umbilical cord was already discord this this were two things you know which was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have 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 protected Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have uh, made Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa born as a circumcised uh, servant and at the same time uh, he was his umbilical cord was really discord. So Prophet Muhammad was making his way out of Amina's womb and was held by a black woman slave, which was Baraka, who said a profound statement to Amina while holding him. He resembles the moon, O Amina, because of the light, the nur of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that gave a delight. Her statement itself brought a lot of joy to the life of Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha. Now, let us pause here for a while and let us reflect upon this episode of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is being received by a black slave woman a black slave woman who does not even aware about her own lineage who's not who's not even aware about her own lineage and this is by the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah in His great wisdom have never neglected any of His servant. 
Allah have proportioned and divided for every servant their own responsibility, regardless of their complexion. And Allah has decreased and destined the leader of all nations to be received by a black woman slave. When Allah says in the Quran, in Surah as Saba, verse number 28, وَمَا أَرُسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَةً لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَذِيرًا We have indeed sent you not except to the entire nation as a glad tider, giving glad tiding and a warner. Warner to the entire nation, regardless of the person is being black or white, tall or short, having an inquisitive mind or an in-inquisitive mind, whoever you are, Prophet Muhammad is the lead, leader to the entire nation and that is a message which is being prepared by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the beginning of his birth that the person to receive him should be a black slave sending a message across that this message can be accepted by anyone and it is not only a specific uh, or exclusive message to a, a particular group or particular tribe or a particular secretariat it can be it can be open to anyone and that is the very reason why he has been sent and he has been sent a mercy not only to the arab but to ajami right to a non arab to a, uh, to a non arab and he was sent to the black and the white where this message this message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the entire humanity. And when the human being is going to hit a point, the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he admits himself into the paradise of Allah. Bar Barakah, she received him, right? when she does not even know her own lineage but Allah honored her in this world and she is amongst the dwellers of the paradise Allah created creation in different forms and shape for two purpose for two purpose number one it is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have created different forms for identification number two for introduction number one is for identification number two is for introduction to identify each other if everyone is going to look the same then what is the purpose of his creation then everyone will get bored if there is no tall there's no short there's no black there's no white there's no brown there's no you know reddish complexion then then everyone looks the same right then 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 basically uh, you'll get bored it's like eating the same food every day you'll get bored so there are different dishes which has been set the fact that there are different dishes, different uh, food we like to consume, even in a daily basis, what more but his creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he created, created human, he created in different forms. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, reveals in the Quran, when he says, Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnaakum min zakarim wa unsa wa ja'alnaakum shu'uba wa qaba'ilan lita'arafu inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum inna Allahi alimun khabir. Now, by, by means of these general uh, addresses, by, by means of these general addresses, the evil of showing pride and vanity on one's lineage and family and tribe is uprooted in one stroke. People are told, people are told to fully keep in mind the fact that they are the progeny of one man and woman. Who is the one man and woman? Adam and Eve. Adam alayhi salatu wasalam and Hawa alayhi salatu wasalam. We all come from there regardless of race, language or religion. At the end of the day, we escalate back. If you want to rewind back in your life, you, everyone would agree that we came from Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve came from, Adam came from soil. And Allah says in the Quran, Inna masala Isa, Inna masala Isa kamathali Adam. خَلَقَهُ مِن تُرَابٍ ثُمَّ قَالَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ That the way Isa alayhi salatu wasalam is created is almost same with, is exactly the same with how Allah created Nabi Adam is created from turab, from dust and soil and from which you have the creation and the very reason why 
Nabi Adam alaihi salatu wassalam was expelled out of paradise is it was because of jealousy and racism started from the paradise when iblis proved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that his creation i.e. what it means his complexion the substance where he's being created from is much more better than the substance where Allah have used to create the human being so he was trying to prove himself that that his creation is much more better ana khairu minhu i'm better than him because you have created him from soil or dust something which is low and you have created me from fire that which always escalate that's when the first uh differences started from and then 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 from which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expelled iblis out and and when uh, circumstances did not permit Nabi Adam alayhi salatu wasalam to recite long and recite long in the paradise and then he committed what he committed then he descended down on this earth right he descended down on this earth together with his wife Hawa and for this reason no one holds superiority to others as far as his species is concerned everyone is the same people have been divided into families and tribe only for two reasons one is for identification the other one is for introduction that i am uh, i myself my name is mohammed amin right i'm i'm from uh, uh, indian ethnicity right i'm an indian but what makes me a muslim is because of me submitting and surrendering my will to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever the ethnicity can be the minute a person takes the shahada and submit and surrender his will to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is important here for us to know is at the end of the day regardless of whichever race you are from whatever language you can speak the minute the person testify to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow the guidance of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he is a muslim he is a muslim and here the complexion you know the other physical form the looks the colors and the physics you know the the the, the physical feature are concerned so that people can identify one one another this is the very reason it does not go beyond it right it doesn't go beyond it how much you know uh, how much the person can 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 grow in their 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 uh their knowledge at the end of the day right what is important to us and to everyone in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to know the differences between uh this 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 different uh, creation of the looks and the colors and uh, the different uh, feet uh, the, the, the the different physical features where Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala have created at the end of the day to know each other but the best amongst them the noblest amongst them Allah used in the superlative form the noblest amongst them is the one who is cautious about Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who is fully aware about Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who knows that Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala will question him on the day of judgment and the one who abides and adhere by the legislation of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala and becomes the practitioner of this religion then that candidate will be successful in the world and which bridges him to get an admission to the paradise of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala inna allaha alimun khabir Allah says implies that the almighty will not be bothered the slightest in judging the people based upon their looks Allah is not going to judge me because I'm dark skin right I'm not going to enter to paradise no it is at the end of the day what the level of faith we have in our heart when prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in a hadith a, a hadith which has been narrated by Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam inna allah la yanzuru ila ajsamikum wa la ila suwarikum walakin allah yanzuru ila qulubikum then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at your body your jism your body your physical feature or does he look at your shape how you look like you know 
fed or thin. But what he looks at is your heart. How pure is your heart? How sincere are you towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How sincere are we and how dedicated are we to the devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the person who, in, uh, who continuously draw themselves closer to Allah by continuously uh, learning and acquire the knowledge for his sake so that he can draw himself and grow uh, himself or his himself or herself in spirituality that is the only thing where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking at from the beginning of the creation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have diversified his creation in different form for us to know that for us to learn from the different culture and understand the different languages an opportunity and a privilege which has been given to the creation to explore in those areas but then again what is important in the sight of Allah is the one who has piety he who is worthy of respect shall certainly gain a place of respect however unknown or and of lowly origin the person can be they talk about barakah the, per the person who received Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. she did not know her lineage right she doesn't even know her own parents but then she was the first person to touch Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and she was there for him throughout her life until even the day when Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away and Prophet ﷺ used to speak very highly about her. Very highly about her. So inshallah, in the upcoming uh, sessions, I will be speaking and discussing more about Barakah on her life together with Prophet Muhammad ﷺ while they were residing together in Makkah before their migration. Hopefully, what I have delivered today is beneficial for me and for you. Whatever goodness is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever evil is for myself and that from Shaitan Akulu Natasma'un. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wal asri inna l-insan ala fi khusr illa al-ladhina amanu wa amilu salihat wa tuwasabi al-haq wa tuwasabi sabar. اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا ورزقنا علوما تنفعنا في الدين والدنيا والآخرة اللهم أرنا حق حق ورزقنا انتباع ورنا باتر باتر ورزقنا اجتنابا ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وتم الصالحة أعمالنا وآجالنا يا الله يا رب العالمين بقدرك سبحان ربك رب العزة المنسفة والسلام على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته